What's up, YouTube? I am bringing you a pretty good match I had against Tom on the run. I'm not sure. I kind of recognize the name. I think it's because he finished in the top eight of that last Edison, really big Edison tournament, was it? Ribbit? I think that's who he is. Uh, I think he did the Light Sworn with the Value and Side Deck, and I believe he did something similar here. Anyways, we had a pretty good match. I am playing Zombies as basically always. He is playing Gladiator Beast. So actually, let's go ahead and pause real quick. I want to just show my hand. I don't want to see his hand. So obviously, he starts out with Ready Airy. Um, I have a few plays where I can just teleport. I can go with Reaper, Zombie Master, however my hand is. It's okay. I could just summon Krebins and pass, but I didn't want him to have access to Bestiari next turn, blow it up, and then I don't even know what I would have done after he got that off. So my play here was to go Mizuki. Um, the reason I went Mizuki is because if he just summons Ready Ari and passes uh, with one back row, his back row has to be something that is going to, how do you put it, protect the Ready Ari. So that, in my mind, left Book of Moon, Bottomless Trap Hole, and Mirror Force, realistically, and Dimensional Prison. But I think Dimensional Prison's kind of fell out of favor. Uh, I do think it'll be coming back here soon. But again, I have not played in many months. Yes, I have not played many months. It's been about a month since I've actually been on Dueling Book. Uh, I just got internet back not too long ago. So, thinking that's those back rows, I feel like Mizuki's just the most expendable card in my hand, to be honest. I could have teleported, gone into Goyo or something like that, but then I risk two cards for one. I could have gone in, I could have really gone hard, Gabrio, drop Treeborn. Um, you get rid of the back row, swing over Spetness Ready Ari, but again, I risk just losing a lot of cards. So just thinking of what it could have been, if it's anything uh, that basically stops Mizuki, he'll probably get removed by Ready Ari next turn, so I wasn't really concerned with Bottomless or Deep Prison. I do like Zombie Master in this matchup because that 1800 attack threshold is actually really important. So again, thinking that it could have been any of those cards, I do go ahead and play, and it is bad. Um, so he does have the Heavy Storm. Definitely not a bad play. I didn't know if I wanted to set the teleport, but I kind of wanted to set it so that way I could uh, have access to Krebins to protect Mizuki from being removed from Radiari. The only way that would happen is if he actually goes and has two Gladiator Beast, um, which is extremely likely, but I set the emergency teleport just in the case that he did. What I was not expecting was the Heavy Storm. So after this, I think he does have, yeah, he has a second Gladiator Beast in Prisma, so... He had access to go into Gazarus anyways, which is worst case scenario. Absolutely worst case. I could have kept that emergency teleport hand and ended up in the same situation, but eh. So very monster heavy hand against Gladiator Beast is extremely unfortunate, uh, especially when Spear Reaper and Treeborn Frog. I have been loving Treeborn Frog in this deck. Don't worry about it. Uh, Krebins has also been really good, and we're actually in this situation, Krebins is about... What I'm thinking is the only chance I have to kind of save myself. I think he sets a back row here. He definitely doesn't just pass. I don't know what his back row is. Um, maybe he thinks for a little bit. Oh, he he upstarts. That was interesting. So definitely an interesting tech. He does set that back row. Again, Gladiator Beast typically have live stuff, but it could also have just been a War Chariot. So I think I, I draw. It's going kind of slow. Just hit next play. So I do draw into a Malicious. Not a great draw. Not a great draw at all. He removed the Mizuki, so I can't discard the Malicious with Zombie Master. So what do I do? I summon Krebins and pass. Uh, let's see what he does. He has a Test Tiger. So he's actually going to go into Darius, I believe, that he has the Bestiari. Yes, he goes to Darius. So Darius, Bestiari, Pop, and it's looking just not good. Not good. So let's fast forward here. Swings with both, and I forget what he tags out into, but at the end of the play, he ends up with a Heraclinos on board, banishes a Krebins. I think probably just avoiding Dark Arm Dragon. So I draw into Phoenix Warm Blast. Absolutely awesome draw. Awesome, awesome, awesome draw. Uh, I set Treeborn. I set Wind Blast. I had a lot of plays. I could summon Zombie Master and just set that... But what I'm doing is I don't expect him to actually summon another monster while he has Heraclinos on the field in two cards in hand. Just knowing how low monster count Gladiator Beast have, maybe this wasn't the right play, but I'm kind of building up to next turn. So I do set the Treeborn Frog, and it does cost me the game in the way... I do make a huge comeback, but Treeborn Frog cost me the game in a way that you probably don't 
imagine uh, we'll get there, but set Treeborn, set that, and he does what I think is a pretty not good play. I think he was probably just trying to get to in the game. One guy's our attack, he got a little greedy in my mind. If he would just attacked and attacked, he would have won. So I'm not sure what he was expecting. Maybe he thought it was a Pyramid Turtle, which is fair. Um, but he goes into Geysaris, which allows me to Phoenix Wormblast. I get my Treeborn engraved. He's already used his normal summon. So it puts me in a pretty decent position to come back, and he only has three cards. So I draw, and we're about even on card advantage. And I get that Treeborn back, putting enough card. So I already knew it. I already knew this Treeborn Frog risked the chance of just being an attack target for any of his Gladiator Beast to do a Gladiator Beast do kind of stuff. Um, my thought was... This Treeborn Frog is going to give me access to Mistworm, though. I have a Live Malicious Engrave, go into Foolish Burial, which allows me to dump the Plague. I have access to Mistworm. That was my thought, and that's why I brought Treeborn back. I ended up changing plays throughout the course of the next couple of turns, um, but it did. So here, I don't call priority. I don't want to lose my in-hand card. He Book of Moons. He Book of Moon, so he kills. He still could have waited. He didn't have to Book of Moon summon. He could have waited me to use that... Um, that effect, I don't know if I would have, and you'll see, but he could have waited to use that, but here's what I do. I try to actually see if I can't bait out some kind of torrent or something and just do that, and then I summon Spirit Reaper. I figured my only chance is really, again, guess for him not to draw any monsters and just whittle away. It does work. Um, maybe it was the wrong play. I could have brought out Stardust, but... And I could have still brought out Mistworm, but Mistworm doesn't help because the Zombie Master is now on defense. So even without Treeborn, I'm still susceptible to in Gladiator Beast, and Mistworm is not good at all. Um, I thought Plague Spreader, along with Malicious, it, get, it gets rid of all my resources. I lose my Plague Spreader, and I'm still in a terrible position if he has, say, another Book of Moon set or whatever it is. If I do it this way, I get to play around some of those cards. And I play around the Phoenix Worm list, which, again, would have lost out to Star Dragon. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting more like the Book of Moon, Deep Prison type stuff, but Phoenix Worm Blast, now he has zero cards to my three. I'm honestly feeling pretty good. Even if he draws into a Gladiator Beast, um, knowing that I have a Life Plague Spreader, so he can go Ready Airy to remove that, but then Zombie Master still attacks over Ready Airy. Or he can go into something to try to get rid of my Malicious or whatever, but at the end of the day, it's a Zombie Master, plus what I have in my hand on field, I can still find a way around against any of his plays. So he does that, draws a sets one. I go Zombie Master, and here's where I do the Plague Spreader. I go out to Thought Ruler, actually. I'm not... What does he have? I'm not sure what he actually had, and it's not going to show, actually. Um, but I end up going Thought Ruler. And this is another turn where I sat down and thought, I can still go Mistworm. Thought Ruler, in my mind, was the best. I'm low in life. Maybe it can get me back a little bit. Um, I could have gone even Black Rose at this point. Thought Ruler, however, dodges... Deep Prison, and seeing how many back rows he's gone through. Um, the Mirror Force is gone, so really, in my mind, Deep Prison and Book of Moon was kind of all that I was thinking about, to be honest, but I guess it could have been a bottomless, but we'll never know. So go Thought Ruler. He can't really do much, but he, I think it's right here. He top decks Quarry. He has Best Yara Engrave. Goes into... Gazaris, destroy both my cards. I have Turtle. I'm kind of able to bring it back a little bit, but I actually just ran out of targets for all my cards. So that's the end of the game. I don't draw into any. Maybe I actually do draw into something good. I don't remember. I don't think it was good, though. Yeah, no. I ran out of targets for all the cards. Um, almost made a comeback. Again, that Treeborn Frog ended up costing me the game. Game three, I draw. My hand's actually much better. So I just go for that turn one Stardust, just knowing how much problems it caused him. Or how much problems it caused Gladiator Beast with the Fiend Worm Blast, pretty good. He changed his deck, so he smokescreened to an entirely different deck. Um, however, I think it's actually much worse against my deck than Gladiator Beast, so this was painful. So he had the Trap Dust Shoot set to get rid of my Caius, and then I'm just thinking, how do I get around his Absolute Zero? If I were him, I think I would have attacked just to get rid of that Stardust. He never does that, um, which is fine, because knowing what he has in hand later on makes sense. But... Getting rid of that Caius, if he had had like a different card, obviously I could have brain controlled, sack for Caius, Stardust, negate the um, absolute zero, possibly banish back row, but it was the trap dust shoot and kind of crushed me. So here I'm in a weird position where I can't get rid of the absolute zero. He knows all of my cards. I can go Stardust, Crash, Set Reaper, but I'm kind of still not sure if he's running Gladiator Beast, so I obviously don't want to do that. 
Uh, if I brain control, it doesn't do, I can get him down 5,000 and then what, I've lost my brain control, so I'm not about that. Um, I think I actually just, he does nothing, I draw. I, so I passed a turn. I passed a turn instead of crashing right there. Um, I passed a turn instead of crashing, and then the next turn I decided to crash. I don't know how important that was, but what it did was allow me to draw into Krebins, and it got rid of Phoenix Windblast with Infernal Prodigy. So getting rid of that Windblast was actually super crucial. Super duper crucial. Um, because obviously, again, it allows me to get in these future plays. So now I can just go ahead and summon Krebins Pass. And Krebins, and this way I always have actually enjoyed Krebins over uh, D.Va, for example. It just allows you to play differently. Where D.Va basically... I guess if I run Gilman, Diva could have done a lot here. Um, but I have to wait a turn, and I probably would have lost, to be honest. Um, but Krebins allows me to stall. I do like Krebins as just like a turn one normal summon, or if I have nothing else, I can still get it, and I don't have to run that Spine Gilman. But I rip into the return from a different dimension. Which, if you're not running this card in any deck that, in my mind, plays Plague Spurter and Malicious, and certainly anything else, in this case, Zombies are also playing uh, Mizuki, Allure of Darkness, Dark Arm, anything that can remove in general. Return just brings you back into games that you shouldn't win. So, he attacks, pay 18. I think he sets two and passes. I do go ahead and Dust Tornado. Or, nope, that's later on. Um, I bring back the Malicious. I think about this for a while. I'm not sure how I want to play this. Um, I had a few options, obviously, with summoning Reaper, because Synchro there doesn't help. Brain Control, Synchro, and Degoyo doesn't help. I could just Synchro directly into Stardust, swung over the... Charisma doesn't help, but the obvious play is... I don't know why it took me so long to think about it, but it's just this. Sack for Caius. Um, I actually do send Cyber Dragon, no particular reason. I just don't want to draw it. Uh, so I get that dead draw out of my deck while I can. And then here... I don't know why... I don't know why he went to Cataster. Everything about my field beats Cataster. Um, maybe his hand, but I don't think his hand. I can't can't remember what his hand was, even a little bit. I can't remember. I think this card, I'm actually going to snipe this card with Dust Tornado, and I believe it's a Book of Moon, which doesn't help at all. The way Cataster works is its effect activates prior to damage and prior to all that stuff. So Cataster's effect, even if Stardust is in defense, for example, and you attack with the Cataster, I could be wrong, I'm not great at this game, but I believe Cataster activates before Stardust. Uh, so Stardust can still negate even if it's defense. Obviously, Kaius just attacks over. I, in my opinion, going into a magical android and crashing with Kaius would have been a little bit better. Or just passing, maybe, and getting that 600. I don't know. Um, but he just sets two. I, like I said, I hit the Book of Moon. And he does have the mirror. Uh, I think what he was doing, actually, now I think about it, he could have gone... Yeah, so I think he was probably going to go... Wait for me, attack, mirror force, I actually start us Book of Moon, and start us gets... Or, on attack declaration, he Book of Moons. Um, Book of Moon resolves, Mirror Force gets rid of Caius, but I still have Stardust that doesn't lose to Catastrophe because how Catastrophe resolves. I'm not sure about that, to be honest. Anyways, um, I get the Solemn, and this game's over. So we go to game three. In game three, I actually draw a pretty decent hand. Obviously, I don't know what he's playing anymore because of the way he sides. But this hand's pretty good. So I'm thinking bottomless I can use on the absolute zero. And I definitely played it wrong. But I wasn't sure how I wanted to play it. I'm not sure there was a right way to play it, to be honest. But I draw into... I draw like a Reaper, maybe? DD Crow. So I did... Oh, shoot. I did side in DD Crows to hit all of his... Um, actually, almost specifically for his best Yari. I swapped DD Crow out for... I forget. Maybe like Book of Life's because Gladiator Beasts just don't leave monsters in the graveyard. Uh, for multiple turns, so I swapped DD Crow. Maybe that doesn't make sense, and maybe that wasn't the right play, but it still ended up being pretty decent. But I really think my only play is Book of Life, play Spreader Synchro, uh, save Book, try to get rid of his Laquari. Otherwise, I have no way to get rid of it. Um, and then bottomless the absolute zero in a few turns. And save Mizuki for Phoenix Moonblast. Maybe if I draw into a monster, play start opening up. But he has the Book of Moon. Set that. Swing for 18, and then I have to pass, which is unfortunate because now I didn't have to, but I do end up Phoenix Worm Blasting. He has MST, Rhoda, Stratos, and obviously it just all goes extremely downhill from here. Maybe if I... Here I'm able to go into Black Rose. I think it just... 
It doesn't do anything. It just kind of delays the inevitable, really. There is a point where I do kind of come back. However, he had... Right here. So I DD Crow that, and then here's where, like, if he didn't have basically what he has, he has another um, War Chariot. Is I was going to go Mizuki swing over that. Or not Mizuki, going to Zombie Master. And I wonder... I actually draw Zombie Master, so I'm not sure. Maybe I cheated here. Yeah. No, I did shuffle. Wow, because I ended up drawing Zombie Master again, so... Which was a really good draw based on what he has on his field next turn. Because he ends with, like, also a Rediari. And a quest on board. So he tags out, he gets back his War Chariot, and I end up topping Zombie Master again, which is super awesome. But it doesn't matter. I think he might have had Bottomless, Deep Prison. He did something that got rid of my Zuki, or maybe he top decked something that got rid of my um, Zombie Master. Basically, I'm still in this game all the way till the very end until he hits this last top deck card. Uh, but he brings out Gazarus and swings for game. Uh, I think I played that last game a little wrong, but I've noticed before, and I've said it multiple times, is that Gladiator Beast is just by far Zombie's toughest matchup every single time. I have such a tough time with Gladiator Beast. Um, I think the hero matchup, that was a weird swap because Gladiator Beast has a great matchup against me. He swapped into all heroes, and that was actually much easier to deal with. But, oh, yeah, he has the Prisma anyways. Just goes guys ours. That's the end of the game uh, against Time on the Round. It was a very pleasurable match. Let me know what you think. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day. Bye.